if you are tuning into this, it is because you want a strategy on how to win your fantasy football team because let's be honest your football team probably sucked or you as a gm sucked and you didn't win anything and that's why you're watching this video i'm going to give you a proven strategy on how to win your fantasy football team and it's not overly complicated i think that's where a lot of people get mixed up they get two either one attached to players or they have such a complicated way about going about their draft if one thing goes to the wayside like they picked your player then you're completely blown so here it is. Background. I drafted in the first round, the second pick in the first round, uh, CMC. Woo, don't know how that happened, but somebody picked Jonathan Taylor. Um, rightfully so, because the year before he did really well. CMC, I felt, was going to be the better option for me because um, he had a better profile of, one, getting receptions, and two, rushing and I think more importantly than anything else in fantasy is getting touchdowns. So he was relied heavily upon when he was with the Panthers. I did not expect him to get traded, but, you know, that's near here or there. My second pick in the draft, I do not know how this even happened, but Travis Kelsey fell all the way to me. And that leads me to the strategy. You need to pick rare players. I'm not talking like big name players. I'm talking about rare players within the field. It's not that they get the ball, right? Because Najee Harris gets the ball. There's plenty of running backs that get the ball. It's how they get the ball that makes them rare. So the first player, CMC, okay? Christian McCaffrey will get the ball from the backfield, be it reception from the backfield or be it running from the backfield, but they will also line him outside on the on the Y or the X to get those run routes. So he's getting a lot of different options on how to get the ball that is far more outside the box compared to other players who are also getting volume. So yes, you want volume, but more important than anything, you want a diversity amongst your volume. So if they can get it from running the ball, catching the ball, and even get putting it out there to get the ball from a, like a wide receiver perspective, that is a winning combination for a rare player. The second one, again, I don't know how I came upon this guy, but it happened, is Travis Kelsey. And I say that Travis Kelsey is rare because from a tight end position, he has over 100 points to the second person, all right? Imagine that 100 points to a second person, that's like equivalent to four games if they're getting 25 game a pop, right? Um, I say that he's rare and became even more rare throughout the season because as they started, they didn't have a running back that you would call, you know, your every down back. Um, they played around with a lot of different individuals. And finally, they came upon Pacheco and Jerk McKinnon, who really held it down and it's important that this happens for his position because for him to get the type of receptions that he can really maximize and be more open than not he needs that play action and you could see that like the last four games when you had jerk mckinnon as well as um as pacheco coming out of the backfield the play action was wide open for him. He was getting far more receptions down the field versus, you know, getting it basically five yards from the line of scrimmage. And you even saw that. It was it was so prominent and well pronounced in the Super Bowl because there were plays where it was a play action and he was getting, excuse me, he was getting the ball down the field and he was wide open. That right there is rare because from his position – Yes, he is a he's a focal point within the offense, but he is even more dangerous now because they have a run game between the two running backs they have. They also have Pat Mahomes. You can consider him rare as well. If you can get those two all in the same draft, oh, that's a win. So for rare players, for me, CMC, Travis Kelsey, and this is going to be a reach right now, but George Kittle will be on that list too here shortly. Once he's fully healthy, once they have uh, put forth the effort to announce who the quarterback's going to be, 
It could be Prudy. I'm not sure. But whoever that quarterback is, they need to throw to Kittle. Prudy used that man. George Kittle became the beast that he always has been. One, he was healthy. Two, they had a run great, a run game. Three, they had a quarterback that really wanted him to be involved because involving your tight end means everybody else can be wide open because you're going to have to pull your safety over to him. So, so I have three guys that I'm going to target this coming year. I'm really just going to target uh, Travis Kelsey once again. And I don't care if, if I have to pick him in the first round. I'm going to get Travis Kelsey. Um, CMC, I... <laughs> It's going to be a toss-up between them two because there's so many different running backs that are out there, but there's only one Travis Kelsey. Okay, so so there's there's if you want a hint, Travis Kelsey is going to be my probably my first pick. I did it two years ago, won it um, this year. I don't know how it happened, but it just happened to where I got him as my second pick in the second round. I don't think it'll happen this year because the guys I play with are getting a lot smarter. I'm taking Travis Kelsey. All right, so you have that um, consistency. You want players who are consistent. I'm not going to give no names, but volume really does play a key role in this as well as the the way to facilitate their offense. Um, wide receivers aren't as consistent as everybody wants them to be. Uh, the top wide receiver was Justin Jay. Uh, Justin Jefferson was getting it, getting it like the way he wanted it, but there's certain games where he would just fall off. Every receiver this year had great, 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 great games, but they also had games that were terrible. Um, so when it comes to consistency, I'm not looking at wide receivers necessarily. The only guy that I could like count on, well, oh, this is going to sound crazy, was Lockett. <laughs> Lockett was going to give me like 15 points a game. Um, he wasn't going to do nothing dynamic to get over that, and he wasn't going to like lose his hands to where he goes – well below that threshold of 15. I would say like 12 to 15 points, he was going to give me that guaranteed every game. And I would always plug him in because I knew he was going to be that champion of consistency. There's other cats out there. Um, Running back position, uh, yes, the second guy was Austin Eckler, who was pretty consistent at getting the ball as well as getting into the end zone. Um, Yeah, there's plenty of players out there are going to be consistent. So I think that's one thing that everybody needs to look at. It's not like the total points throughout the year. It's where where is their average per game? Where are they per game? And that's something that you can really build on because the next one that I'm going to talk about is potential. Um, Potential to have breakout games based on their innate ability to just you know get down the field, break tackles, and the the one player that that really pushed himself to a level where everybody had to put notice on him was Amon St. Brown. Amon Ross St. Brown. I would I didn't believe that anybody from the Lions would ever put forth the effort that he did and just be like the focal point of the offense for that type of team. But he was. And if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that offense was top five in 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 the NFL. So yeah, Amon St. Brown deserves the notoriety that he is gonna have those games where He's just explosive. Justin Jefferson, explosive. Um, I had I had uh, Devontae Davis, uh, Adams, my bad, (laughs) Devontae Adams, and he gave me games where I did not expect it. I think there was one game it was like between them and the Chiefs. I had Travis Kelsey on one side who put forth the effort. I had. Adams and I think they both put up like 30 points each so I, I won that game so yeah potential um I didn't see I didn't see this happening but it did but I always knew Josh Jacobson was the man because the amount of volume that he was getting it was only a matter of time before he really put forth the different things that I was seeing from like the stands and as it turns out, it happened the way that it happened. I wasn't able actually to draft him initially. I had to trade for him, and I took advantage of what I had. I had um, Jamal Williams. I packaged Jamal Williams, um, some other players, and at the time, Jamal Williams was getting like plus 15. Uh, Josh Jacobson, like week three, didn't do so well. So for like three games, he didn't do well. I made that trade, and I held on to him for the whole entire season because – Lo and behold, he had a breakout year. 
He had it was a contract year. He had a breakout year. He was very consistent in his volume. It was only a matter of time before he started breaking tackles, before he found his ankles again. The man was a beast back in college. He's a beast in the NFL. So again, like I'm not saying that you're 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 terrible as a GM, but if you clicked on this, you needed help. And I hope I was able to help for at least like the first two picks or three picks. I hope I was able to help. I'm telling you, if I have first first pick, first dibs, I'm probably gonna go after um, Travis Kelsey. I'm probably gonna go after CMC. But that's near here or there. We're here to help you. Um, I'm gonna come up with more videos like this and have videos where it's more in depth on the individuals that I'm gonna draft and why I would draft them because there's different levels of this shit. There's different tiers to each category. Um, and there's like there's different tiers because there's you're gonna have players who are gonna be real good initially and will have a dramatic drop off. And then you're gonna have guys that won't hit until like playoff season. It's just the way it works. Um yeah, stay tuned for that. I'm hoping that I was able to help. If not or nothing else, it is it is a good day to be you. Deuces.